and welcome to a very special edition of Current Affairs on JTV, the Global Jewish Channel. Joining me today in the JTV studio is former Mayor of London, Ken Livingston. Now, Ken Livingston will be uh, no stranger to many of you, but of course he's recently re-emerged in the news with some pretty controversial comments about um, Zionism, Hitler, and indeed inferences about whether these were anti-Semitic or not. It's either July, August, September of 33. It allowed those Jews right, leaving you Germany said, to... You just said 32 in your original comments. And that's I when, he, that when the election was, but he became... Yeah, but he, his, didn't, he didn't win the election in 32. He was the largest party. He was the largest party. I mean, but he then, a bit like the American presidency, several months passed before he became chancellor. Well, not quite, actually, Ken. That's not how the German election system worked no. in 1932-33. What actually happened? Because no happen, one had a majority, no, they took a long well, time. That's not correct yeah. either. Uh, you will know that he wins two elections in 1932. The first, he wins in a major way. The second, his support starts to go down. Mm. There are chancellors in the interim. Governments collapse. Only mm. at the beginning of 1933 is he appointed mm. with the collapse of another government. But there were governments oh, yeah. in place the whole time. I think what I'm trying to say is there. What's disturbing about the certainty with which you state mm. things is that, as we've just identified, mm. you're not that sure about the facts. Mm. You've got a broad thesis mm. in your mind, but you're a bit hazy on the facts. Would that be correct? No, no. I've never actually read a book about the, the elections in 1932. I've well, read... how can you state that Hitler in 1932 was supporting Zionism? I mean, well, if you actually look in his speech he made, I think, on the 6th or 7th of July 1920, he actually says, I mean, the Jews should move to Palestine. That is where they can have their full civil rights. So he already had that in mind. Yeah, but he also before. speaks in Mein Kampf about ideas mm. of um, exterminating them, removing mm. them in a different way, not in a physical mm. sense of just but actually getting mm. rid of them. Yes. But that's different to moving them to Israel. That is, but that was Mein Kampf, which he wrote in prison. Once he became chancellor, the policy he instituted was that deal that was signed up um, that autumn and led to 66,000 Jews escaping okay. the Holocaust. Let's come back, though, to the point I was just trying to mm. make. You are a little hazy on the facts. Mm. There was no deal in 1932. There was no State I of Israel. I there was a deal in 1932. No, well, I said in, when he became Chancellor... You said his policy then, when he won the election in 1932, was that Jews should be moved to Israel. It wasn't. But it, it wasn't. Well, it, it was. You, you then stated in 1933 a policy emerged, but it wasn't in 19. You've got no historical proof for 1932 being that point. What I'm trying to say to you, Ken, is yeah. you've got a thesis, a broad thesis, mm. and you're presenting mm. arguments which we'll talk about about mm. 1933. But the fact that you keep on citing 1932 is historically inaccurate, and that's a problem that's when for the some of the other was. things. Okay. So I'd like to play to you mm. um, the testimony of a. Holocaust survivor, a lady called Marla Tribich, who mm. survived Bergen-Belsen, mm. who heard your comments and wanted to say this about them. Well, I find it very offensive and hurtful when people belittle the Holocaust, when they use the Holocaust to score a political point. I, I, I really can't see it. Uh, and, and they're usually people in high places. I take them as being intelligent, educated, and yet they can stoop so low as to use the Holocaust for, for just to, to somehow better their position, I, I suppose. Um, and what really bothers me is that they do it while there's some survivors still around. What will they do when we're all gone? Well, let's look at what Brenner says, your source. Mm. Brenner says, and here's probably where you've got some of it from, the Nazis preferred the Zionists to all other Jews, hmm. correct? Yes. Okay. So, where Brenner has got the source, Brenner has got that from, is from a man called Rabbi Joachim Prince. Okay. It's a hmm. document he used to establish in his article where he states the Prince himself states about how we, hmm. you know, we wanted uh, the Zionist cause hmm. to be favoured, and uh, and it came about hmm. in this way. What he doesn't quote, and this is quite crucial, in the same document, hmm. the same document, uh, Prince goes on to say. But the Nazi attitude towards the Zionists was only a facade. In reality, the Zionists were and are miserably treated. During the years, Zionists mm. have frequently been arrested. Zionist mm. meetings were forbidden or dissolved. Mm. Zionist officials were and still are mm. frequently called to the Gestapo and examined in not very polite terms. In brief, 
the seeming prosionist attitude of the German government is not an expression of, and should not be confused with, cooperation, cooperation on, the, on the part of one side or the other. So the very same source Brenner is using mm. to prove his point is actually arguing against it. Mm. What do you think about that from a point of historical veracity? Well, as I just said, senior Nazis at that meeting in July 2007 wanted to stop this deal because they feared the creation of a Jewish state. Hitler overruled them and therefore I think Hitler saw this as the way continuing right up until I mean, he began his policy of genocide. Right, but it wasn't supporting Zionism. We've just had the words of a prominent Zionist, okay, hmm. who has stated that Zionists, Zionists were persecuted as all other Jews were. There was no facade. The historian yes. you are relying on mm. for your perspective is selectively quoting. Mm. You understand the concept of yes. that, yes? But he's not he's historian. Picking... He was a journalist. He worked for the, the Jewish Guardian. So your, your view of history but, therefore comes from a journalist. That's what you're saying. I, I read that. Not from a historian. Well, no. When he came to, to Britain in 1983, I reviewed the book. There was a lot of controversy and debate around it. Yes. I mean, but I think everyone had forgotten it until this row erupted. But there are many others. I well, mean, because you text. cited him. Pump? You're citing him. That's why it's re-erupted. I mean, I mean, You're re citing him as your primary source for this. It's, well, no, it's not my primary source or my only source. The simple fact is there is no academic or historian who denies the agreement existed. Now, you can argue now, about what was on, in Ken. the minds we've, we've of Nazis We've got through this already. No, we've no. gone through this already. We've, we all have acknowledged the mm. agreement existed. What mm. I'm trying to say to you, as one mm. you know, sensible person mm. to another is... If we're talking about historical facts, mm. we have to therefore, we have a duty to quote fully from mm -hmm. historical facts. Well, we can't pick the facts that we would like and then ignore things in the same documents. Remember this in the context. Ignore the same documents that say yeah. contrary. We have to acknowledge that's well, correct, right? No. Are you prepared to accept that Brenner no. may, have, may have misquoted? No, listen. Is Linton Crosby the most successful propagandist since Goebbels? I, I absolutely agree with that. Really? Yeah. That